Hi everybody and welcome to episode 10. Today we are going to feature some out of this world tours with Google Earth. And what's really exciting is the new Google Earth has been completely revamped and relaunched so that now it works anytime, anywhere, on any device, no installation required. And so what I'm showing you today in the Chrome browser experience, you can absolutely experience if you have iPads or tablets, and there's even some bonus features if you happen to be using the iOS features like having a camera built in that we can't necessarily do in the Chrome browser. So I'm really excited today because we might be looking at GeoTools for the surface value of, well, obviously it makes sense for things like social studies, maybe even science, but I love using that geographical and place-based learning to support all aspects of curriculum. Whenever we encounter a place in a novel or a textbook, we can immediately look it up so that we can be there, understand what it is like to be in that environment, to fully understand perhaps the setting of a story or a historical event. Google Earth also has some amazing t features built into it, like measurement tools for mathematics and educational tours that have been completely put together for you and are constantly being updated every single month. So I hope you enjoy exploring the Earth with this free and easy tool, knowing that it's good for all ages, all subjects. We just have to use our imagination of where we'd like to go in this beautiful galaxy. So for now, I invite you, if you're in a Chrome browser, to join me at earth.google.com, or if you happen to be on a tablet or an iPad, you can use the app, and we're going to get started right now. So the first thing you're going to notice when you get to Google Earth is it's going to give you a beautiful infrastructure, telling you a little bit more information. It's going to show you how to find places that you love. It's going to give you an overview, some new features and games, like we can all go exploring with Carmen San Diego. And as well, it's going to show you things like measurement and distances. It's giving, just giving you a lot of different ideas. And what's great about this is it's constantly being updated. As well, there's an entire resources section. I love the resources section because it just gives us even more details for educators to say, okay, you're looking for more information? No problem. There's education, there's outreach, whatever it is that you're looking for. And you can go ahead and you can say, learn more. And in the education section, um, it's going to give you a lot of tours. So exploring the earth, some inspiration, but of course, some resources to be able to help teachers plan those really great lessons for their students. And so I really love that this is built in for teachers so that you're not having to guess. This takes the guesswork out of being able to use it, teaching you how to filter, how to find categories, different ideas that you would like to be able to do. So now what we absolutely want to do is we want to be able to explore the earth and we want to be able to launch Google Chrome just to be able to take us on our first adventure. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to launch Google Earth in Chrome. And as a girl who took paleontology as my university degree, uh, it's really fun to see all of the billion years of history that we can see compiled in one one beautiful website. Now, what we're going to do first is the basics. You can see here that we see this beautiful um, earth and I can zoom in and I can zoom out just using the scroll feature of my uh, mouse pad or if I have a, a separate mouse. Now, what I can do is I'm going to do a bit of a basic search. So perhaps I've read a story and I have looked at Mount St. Helens. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at Mount St. Helens. And what you're going to notice right away is that beautiful animated view without you having to do anything. That flying in feature excites students to be able to see the different potential possibilities for them to explore. What you're going to notice right away is some quick facts that it's going to give you source from crowdsource information such as Wikipedia. Now you can read that information that's here and I can also close that panel. The next thing that I can do is I can of course zoom and scroll to look around different aspects of this particular map as well as we have full access to street view and that's by taking pegman and you click and hold him kind of like lifting up a little kitten and what i can do whenever i click and hold him and wherever i see any form of blue on my map what it's going to do is it's going to now take me into the street view infrastructure where i am seeing real life um, spherical images that have been taken from other people. 
And so now I can really zoom in and explore. At any point, I can close that photosphere and now I could go ahead and take my pegman and I could potentially look at something else. So now it's not just that satellite view map. Now I'm really in there. And if I want to talk about what does a crater look like? How can I be able to look up and down? What was that path of damage when it first exploded? I now have a more realistic understanding of this particular environment. So you can see already how just the feature of being able to search a place and go deeper into it is already educational value to the moon and back. But now I want to show you some of the content, the educational content that maybe has been a bit unseen for you in Google Earth. And we're going to use the Voyager feature. Voyager feature has pre put together tours for educators to be able to use with students that's complete with information complete with photo spears, even a little bit of script to some facts. And it's really a chance for us to go deeper into all aspects of curriculum simply by using this Google Earth tour. So I'm going to take you to the Voyager. You're looking for the captain's wheel inside of Google Earth. And let me show you what it can do. So when we go into our Voyager feature, what it does is it opens up uh, an infrastructure that allows us to see, first of all, editor's picks. So this is often something that has maybe been a current event, maybe it's uh, a, a particular time of year. But what I want to show you first, actually, is that we can do something called layers. If you teach any aspect of geology to your students, whether that's within social studies, science, or actual geographical um, content, you can see some really amazing geology tours that have been put together. So for here, perhaps we want to look at some earth and atmospheric science. We want to look at rocks and minerals. We're going to look at 10,000 years of volcanoes. When I go into one of the Voyager tours, it's going to give me a still an animated view of Google Earth, but now there's pre-populated uh, way marks for me to be able to visit. On the right hand side, I'm going to see those particular script or points of interest that it's given me so that I can now go deeper in and explore. So I could go search for Mount Vesuvius right away in Italy, it will animate and fly me into that particular location. And now I have the panel where I can find out some information beside. I can continue to read more. And of course, it's a fully interactive map. So if I did again want to drag my pegman and look for any of those street view features, even within the Voyager tour, oh, I drug it where it doesn't go, even within the Voyager tour, then I'm going to be able to do that. And so that's really exciting because now it's not just the pre-planned tour or infrastructure that they've given us. Now I can also go deeper into that area and I can look around. At any point, I can restart the tour. It will take me back to the beginning of any of them. And I don't have to follow the path that they've given me. If I still want to zoom and explore and go to any one of these particular locations, I can do that. Another tour that I really love is the education section. I personally think this is the most powerful place that we have within Google Earth because this is now pulling out current events, um, subject area curriculum topics that are based on a vast array of different grade levels and standards. And so I can go through here and I can start to see some of my favorite things. Like if we want to talk about the current events of stopping the spread of Zika, because we're looking at um, health sciences, human cells and structures and our junior high science programs, we can do that. If I want to do an exploration of poetry around the world, this is a really fantastic way to not only um, experience poetry in our language arts classes, but there's also going to be the opportunity to explore culture. As soon as I choose one of these, I can see all of the different places that it wants me to be able to go. Of course, I can also read more at any point and it will take me to that source of information. But now back here in my tour, I'm able to look around at different points and see all of the different ones that it wants me to visit. So if I want to go here and I want to look at some indigenous poetry, I can look here at this Native American poetry, the 13 moons on turtles back. And of course, I can fly and animate to that particular location. Again, what I love about it is it gives me that important information in the right hand panel. But 
again, I can pull that street view image and I can go inside where our ancestors have visited first and understand their inspiration and provocation for this type of poetry that they created. Another one that I really love is ABCs from space. Now, don't be disheartened thinking that's just for our, our early learners. This is an amazing opportunity for early learners to go through this, but I have done this technique even with students in our junior high and high school language arts classes. And so when we go inside of this, this was provided to us from NASA, we can actually go through the ABCs of space. It'll find a geographical feature that looks like that letter. Not only is it going to show us what starts with that letter, but it's going to give us some really fun alliteration and information. So it'll tell me about fjords, facies, fog, fossil fuels, faults, and there we go. And so I can keep going through this. And one of the things that I really love to do with students is now we start to use Google Earth to make our own ABCs from space. So maybe I'm looking at photospheres from something else, a different topic. Suddenly we capture a letter. I'm just screen capturing that image and I'm putting it perhaps in a Google drawing or Google slides. Now, screen capturing is something that's really great for students to do in these photosphere. The one downside about Google Earth is there's no save feature for that particular photosphere. We can bookmark places and go back to those saved places. But one thing I like to teach students is how to do a screen capture on a Chromebook or a PC and be able to now take that screen capture of the photosphere and use it. Whether that's a provocation for writing or I am capturing an area that we're studying in um, social studies or science, perhaps I'm putting together a timeline and I want to put together those different pieces, I can screen capture it and now use that in say something like Google Slides. Now, if you do happen to be using this on the iPad app, here's the one benefit of the iPad app. It's got the camera absolutely already built into the Google Earth app, so I can just take a picture and it will save it to your camera roll and you can use it for something else. Now I want to talk to you about points of interest because it's one thing to just see and experience these different places, but we want our students to be able to be armored and powered up with important facts about a region. And so I can do a search for a particular location and then it can give me points of interest. It's almost like the cool Google Earth trading cards of that area. So let me show you with a couple of regions from our social studies curriculum. So I'm going to go back to my search button and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to search for Tanzania. When I go ahead and I search for Tanzania, it's going to take me, it's going to fly me to Tanzania, a country in East Africa. And what's really great is I see where that is in relative, relation to me in the world. But what you'll notice is down here, there's something called points of interest. When I choose points of interest, it's now going to give me the super cool trading card stack of different things that I can know about the particular region. So it's giving me a lot of information. At any point, if I want to click on any one of those pieces of information, I can absolutely do that. And now it's going to give me more detailed information and other things that people are searching for, what that looks like within Google Maps, and of course I can go back. I can do this for other places. Perhaps we are looking for Iqaluit. It'll take me there. I can get an understanding of this beautiful city in Canada. It'll show me a drawing of the region. And as well, I can look at the points of interest. I can click through some of those different pieces. And at any point, if I still want to be able to use my Pegman to be able to go into this particular place, I can absolutely do that and be able to look deeper into my street view and have a first-hand experience as close as I can without needing that plane ticket to get to a Iqaluit. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how we can use math using distance, area, and perimeter inside of Google Earth. I'm going to go ahead and search for the Great Barrier Reef. Now, once I'm here, again, I have those lovely quick facts that's going to give me, including some pictures. When I click on those quick facts, I can go ahead and look through some pictures of that particular area, as well as read about it, did you know, and some more searches. Now, one of the things that I absolutely love that's built into Google Earth is this lovely little ruler. It's the measurement tool. At any point, if I wanted to see how long the Great Barrier Reef was, 
I could see how far that actually goes down the Australian coast. I don't have to be done there. Perhaps I want to look at a bit of an area. Every time I click, it leaves a point for me, and now I can actually look at those different mathematical measurements. I can also screen capture what I've done here, and I can copy those measurements to paste into something else. Okay, now for the last feature. Uh, something I really love is there's this beautiful little dice that you can see that is built into New Google Earth, and it's called I'm Feeling Lucky. This is a really fun way. If you've got kids who are perhaps uh, done early, or maybe they just need a brain break, what a better way than then instead of just putting them on an app where they're just consuming a game, they can actually explore places that have been previously unknown to them. So let's see where it takes us today. If I go here and I click my die, I'm just going to get taken somewhere in the world. And look, it's Niagara Falls, Canada. Now, all of those features I just showed you, as far as quick facts, images, street view, that all actually applies. So now I can see something perhaps that I've never even seen before. Maybe it's just a provocation for a story. Wow, we can do street view right here in the middle of the Niagara. Imagine kids starting to write that adventure about going over the falls or the people that they're able to see. How fun. They don't like the place? Shake the dice again. Terrace of the Elephants? I've never even heard of this before. So now it's going to take me to this temple in Cambodia and I'm going to get to experience something I've never seen. How awesome is the world we live in? So I hope you like the new Google Earth. This is a fantastic feature whether you teach kindergarten or grade 12, it doesn't matter. I am a blue hair old lady and I love Google Earth because it shows me places in the world that I never even knew existed in a way that was never before possible. So give it a try. Tomorrow we are going to continue with our awesome exploration of Google Geo tools. And I even have one of my besties joining me as part of this special episode uh, for a brand new tool that has just been released for Edmonton Catholic Schools. And that is our fantastic Google tour creator making our own virtual reality explorations based on language arts, science, social, math, you name it. I'm pretty excited. So thanks for joining for me today. Try the different activities that I linked for you below and I hope you enjoyed the new Google Earth.